Hi friends, this is Mayanak Misra. Welcome back to my channel. And today I will be talking about a film. And I will give you a little idea. Okay. To shoot that film, it was it was shot over a duration of three years, hundred days, and four hundred hours of footage. Now, now you just think about it. The level of dedication that was poured in to make this film. Okay, so this film is Honeyland, Macedonian North Macedonian entry for 92nd Academy Awards and nominated uh, in Best International Feature Film category and Best Documentary, Best Best Feature Documentary category at 92nd Academy Awards. Honeyland, North Macedonian entry. Okay, so I will explain you little by little. So let me. uh let me just start with uh, the the how how the story was conceived okay so at first filmmakers uh libomir stefanov and tamara kotevska they wanted to make a film about bregelnica river and its surrounding areas okay it was a short documentary subject which was supposed to be funded by macedonian government okay so when they came then they came across artisan one uh, woman i will explain you about uh, about her life so when they came across so that time they thought about a a feature documentary uh, subject that uh, they just fell in love with this subject okay and uh, and artisan's life so that's how it that's that's how the idea of honeyland came okay so now let me explain you about artisan's life okay so artisan is a a rural woman in north macedonia the center north macedonia's village the village is village name is uh, bakarlia in the municipality of Zo, zolo zolovo i i forgot the name exactly zolovo okay so that is the municipality and bakarlia is the village's name okay so it is a mountainous village and a deserted village okay so there is no road no uh, the very few roads you know and there is scarcity of electricity there is no electricity the scarcity of water only artisan is dependent on only a spring source for the water okay so that is that is the uh, situation of the village where artisan lives with her mother so she has a mother who is very old uh, she is uh, she is almost at her last condition okay and artisan is taking care of her mother uh, okay so that is as she is of turkish descent and as per turkish descent the last daughter takes care of her mother uh, in the last stage okay so she is a very nice human being so she takes care of her mother and she survives she makes her daily uh, makes her both hands meet makes her livelihood by wild bee keeping okay so she is probably in the list of uh, the remaining last remaining wild bee keepers not only in macedonia but in the in europe and in the entire world okay and when she harvests honey from those bee hives she sells that honey in the market she goes to skopje and sells the honey there that's how she makes her livelihood in that mountainous aloof and uh, you know deserted village so that is the life of artisan okay uh, and she was she was doing good uh, she is very nice uh, she you know she doesn't have any problem as of now what happens suddenly one day one rancher and and uh, you know uh, one rancher and nomadic person his name is hussein sam he comes to the village uh, and uh, he what he does he does animal husbandry uh, he grows the cattle and then he makes his uh, livelihood from from that income so at first artisan is fine she maintains a good relationship with uh, hussein and uh, 
his uh, wife and uh, seven children uh, she even when hussein sees that art is has a good way of living through the through her uh, through culturing the wild bees you know he is interested and art is helps him in the initial stage even she donates few bees to him okay and she says very clearly that you harvest the honey 50 and keep 50% of the honey for the bees it's a winter season uh, okay so they have to grow the the bees also will have to grow okay for their for their for, for that purpose then one customer comes and he demands more honey from hussein and hussein is not able to produce that much honey okay so what what happens you know that is the theme of this film that you know human greed human greed destroys the ecological balance the in fact there is a there is a uh, balance in environment if humans break that balance there will be negative impact not only on a particular person but everybody and that ecological chain is broken okay so when when hussein gets that order he takes that order to produce more honey and he becomes greedy so what he does he harvests almost the entire money from the from his beehives and he he doesn't he doesn't follow artis's principle that take half and leave half for the bees he he breaks that principle and what happens you know i as i told you that when you break nature's chain the ecological chain then there will be negative impact so hussein's bees attack artis's bees and almost all the bees remaining a few they die okay so that happens and artis is uh, almost out of business she is in uh she is in deep great problem is a big problem and in the meantime artis's mother uh, also passes away okay so you have to see the relationship in one side there is a business aspect where artis a you know grows the wild bees and collects the honey and then uh, sells in goes to skopje and sells there other side artis a takes care of her mother and mother and daughter they share a very good bonding you have to just see the subtitles to understand the dialogue okay is perfect and artis is one thing is that she is a perfect example of a human being not only her mother she takes care of even the cats or dogs I mean domestic anim- animals as well so she is a lovable uh, human being and on the on the other hand hussein sam is a greedy human being so there are three four three four lines here society creates the greed and people just follow that greed and in the same time they break the environmental chain that's why you see there are ecological imbalances you see climate climate problem uh, you know environmental problems uh, those things come up It's such a fantastic film to deal with this kind of issues Uh, so that, that that is the story line almost uh, okay that is that is the out structure of the story and uh, the, this film you know i'll talk about uh, this film that uh, the level of dedication that was poured in you know for just imagine the editing if you have 400 hours of footage to make a one half or a two hours film Uh, just imagine the level of dedication the filmmakers have i i think these uh, I, i think uh, uh, filmmakers like tamara akotevska uh, and uh, libomir uh, stefan stefan they they did a fantastic job and cinematographer beautiful breathtaking cinematography what i see meticulously powerful film astonishingly beautiful and meticulously powerful so i think you have already seen it it uh, it was nominated for best international feature film at 92nd academy awards it was nominated for the best uh, feature documentary at 92nd academy awards it won uh, three awards at sundance film festivals and multiple international acclaims across the world 
everybody praised and universal acclaim for the film and i am sure you are not going to miss this gem from north macedonia i think you have already seen it okay so that's it about the film and uh, one thing one good thing i will tell you that uh, you know these filmmakers when they got the award money uh, they helped artize and they are they are con they have constructed a house in a nearby village and bought refrigerators and all the uh, human appliances to help her so probably she will be shifting to her new house and uh, I, I i i can tell you that artize is a born star so you will when you see the film you will not realize that this is a you know this is a woman rural uh, woman in north in a in a north macedonian village uh, okay who hasn't seen who doesn't have that much influence on the outside world but she can act in that way general you know genuine acting and 95% of the film is real you know they it, it is like the you know fly on the wall documentary film making wherein the cameraman and the filmmakers they just watch what is happening so 95% portion of the film is real only when husain sam uh, is coming to the village that scene was reproduced because husain already came to the village when the when the filmmakers uh, went there okay otherwise 95% of the film is real and these filmmakers the, the level of hardships they they had you know that time because it is there is no electricity so one or two days they will stay there and the and then they have to go again to charge their battery for the filming okay and they will have a tent there they will stay they they will stay there and they again go to uh, you know a different place to get battery charging to have uh, foods and then again come back then again shoot and that's how they continued for 3 years and one year after that after 3 years one year they did the post production uh, it was done in beirut and one year uh, it took one year and that time during the post production they actually got the transcript so when the filming was happening that time they didn't know they the filmmakers didn't know the turkish language uh, so that time they didn't have any idea what is the dialogue uh, about so they did, they didn't know that when the transcript came in the post production phase that time they came to know about the dialogue okay so this is a genuine film you know this is a genuine film uh, it's a real film and uh, i think you are not going to miss this I, i and i hope and i believe that you have already seen it Uh, so that's it about uh, the honeyland film uh, and uh, thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and uh, press the bell with the bell button uh, so that you don't miss any update and until i make the next video thank you and bye